Welcome to the BBC Podcast. Tapping in with Tucci again. Today, we got to do another Monday Monday episode live in the studio. I'm going to introduce the special guests and then we'll run the intro. Oh, baby, you're so juicy. Juicy. Do you mind if I slice, 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 slice? You like the way I work you out. I don't mind if you tease me now. My lady, you deserve a crown now. Yeah. I like it when you take it to the ground. Do your dance, mommy. Dance. Honey, I like the way you work for me. The way you move your ass got me going down. You got it, girl, you got it. Y'all already know what it is. It's your girl, Pushing P, here from uh, the Bully World and from the Exotic Network. All right. So, where you. How are you promoting like the actual work that you actually do? Like, how do you how do you get it out there? Like, how could a a breeder actually start? Where, pretty much, like what's step one? What's step one to becoming a breeder? To becoming a breeder. Um, I would say do your research and see what style of bully you like because depending on what your style is, is where you're gonna be at. So, um, step one would definitely be research. Um, watch YouTube, watch the lives. You think so? And the, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Because um, I told this story the other day when I was podcasting. Um, you'll get finessed so quick. My first man, bully. I learned. I learned <laughs> for real, yeah. for real. Yeah. Like, man, like, there, there's, um, like I have a, couple, a few Frenchies, and it's just like, like, I ran into, like, a breeder that was like, oh, yeah, we'll help you, man. Like, I want to help you do this. I want to help you do that. And I was like, finding out, like, later after the fact that, like, man, they sold me, like, a lot of shit I didn't need. I did a lot of stuff I didn't do, need to do. Like, I did a lot oh, of yeah. AIs a lot of times that, that like, no. that, like, just didn't take and running, the, like, um, progesterone. Is that what it's called? Progesterone. Yeah, progesterone. The like, I, man, I did the PGs, like, shit, probably, like, five times when I didn't need to. Ooh. Yeah. And I didn't know, like, a lot of times, like, just hearing stuff where people are saying, like, hey, man, like, just wait. Like, as soon as you see, like, some type of, like, bleeding or anything, wait some days and then start running the PGs and mm-hmm. just see what the numbers are at. And I'm just like, man, I wasted, like, a lot of money. I was playing. So like, I normally do, like, day five. Mm-hmm. And then from there, um, maybe every two, three days. The first, the second time, I'll definitely run it after the two days mm-hmm. just to see how high up the numbers have jumped. So if it went from a three to, uh, you know, seven, I'm knowing, okay, she's hopping up four numbers every two days. Mm. Um, if she's going from a three to a four or a five, I'm like, I'll see you in another three days. But mm. okay. I do my own PG test, okay. so that works out for me. So, know? like, what made you pick bullies out of all, all type of like dog breeds? Initially, I started out with Presa Canarios, and if you're not aware of what a Presa Canario is, it is a Spanish Mastiff. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I so it's so. basically yeah. the cousin of a King Corso. The mm-hmm. difference between a King Corso and an Italian or a uh, um, a Presa Canario, a Presa Canario is a lot larger, and they'll have the tail. So that's how you know it's a Presa versus the dock tail of a King Corso. Mm. So I started with them, and then um, one of the breeders um, had posted a bully. So initially, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. And that's how it started. I okay. fell in love with the bullies, and then it was a wrap once I did all my – I thought I did all my research. Mm. I was like, yeah, I, I bought a, a dog from a um, breeder in Detroit. Mm. The dog kept growing, bigger than what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, afterwards, I ended up selling it. But um, that's why I say, first step, do your research and find out what you're going to like. Are you going to be more of a color breeder, more of a structure breeder? Mm. Um, do you like tighter skin? Do you like looser skin? Okay. Do you like a bull? Do you like a nano? So do your research and find out as much as you can about that bloodline prior to buying. And then once you find what you like, mm. Find the breeder, you know, and which is mm. hard, but I mean, how, like, how long have you been in the game? Um, 2018. 18. Okay, so you before this whole COVID train. Oh, the pandemic. Yeah, I was in it before the pandemic. Okay. Oh yeah, before everybody was balling. Mm-hmm. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> y'all made y'all made me good. <laughs> um, how did you know that? Like at that point, that the dog to like stick with. Like obviously, like, I looked online. I've seen them all over the place. Like people flipping poodles. People flipping like. St- I'm, I'm tripping out just because my age, like, but I was like, man, people still flip like Rottweilers and Dobermans. Oh yeah, the like, Dobermans are back. Yeah, really? yeah. I think every every dog has its stage to like, like you see now the mm-hmm. the, you know, the yeah, Frenchie like market have yeah, taken yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. hit. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I feel like every right now, especially too, because for a while a lot of Frenchies were being stolen. So now a lot of people need that XL, meaning the Dobermans, the King Corsos. Mm-hmm. So we all need that in our yard now. But mm-hmm. it it is crazy to see because I remember as a kid. 
I saw a lot of the poodles and the Yorkies being sold, and yeah, that's yeah. back now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So and the minute. Pomeranians. Is, 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 are the dog? Is the dogs like 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 a clothing trend type thing? Like one minute is hot, it'll come in, and go out. Is is that how the dog? Thing I think works? it is. I, I think like it is. Yeah. Okay. I think what it is is like it becomes so oversaturated and so many people, mm. and then it's like, okay, I got one. What's the next thing to buy? Mm. You know. And you got to mm-hmm. remember, at one point. Everybody had a fucking Frenchie. Yeah. You saw all the rappers <laughs> buying a Frenchie. And y'all yeah, bought some man. big ass. Uh-huh. If y'all see this, y'all some, bought some big ass fucking Frenchies. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> for real. Y'all for bought real. them from the wrong people. Like, so so what about that too? Like, people finding out that they, the dog they got, like, the breed is like messed up or something is jacked up. Like, like how did you just do your own research or somebody just like, they look at your dog like, man, what's wrong with your bully, man? I like, think that's what ass. happened. Okay. Yeah. People look at each other as bullies or, or Frenchies and like, what's wrong with your dog? Like, <laughs> You know, why is it so big? And okay. a lot of times people don't tell you that. Mm. You know, a lot of the lives of like, yeah, that's a nice size dog. Mm. And um, like now I'm at a point where people will hop on my life and be like, what you think of my dog? And I'm like, oh, I forget about this. Do you keep it real? Do you keep yeah. it real then? Yeah, what I so? ask, my question is always, well, what's your vision? Because I might not like your dog, but you're also in fucking Texas or you're in Atlanta. So the markets are very different everywhere. So I always ask them, like, what's your vision? Mm. What's your favorite stud out right now? Mm. Okay, bet. If you like that, then you're going to have to breed to this to get that. Because, okay. yeah, okay, okay. that's what I try to tell them. So that's what I was going to say. Is like, it sounds like it's like a long game type of thing. Like, if you actually starting off, like, keep it realistic for these people. Like, if you want to start off breeding, like, when will you actually start seeing some revenue? Like, obviously, you have to... You have to get your stud. You got to get your, or or should you should you start off with the stud first or start off with the female? Hell first? nah. Start off with a female. Start off with a female. Start off okay. with a female, and if you're looking to make money a little quicker, start off with an adult female. Because mm-hmm. when you buy a puppy, um, you yeah, all puppies are cute. Mm-hmm. Wait till that motherfucker keep getting bigger, 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 and you're like, what did I buy? But not only that, um, when you buy a puppy, you're not thinking she can't breed yet. So now you done spent. 10 bands on a on a bully that you're not going to be able to use for about another year. Mm. You know, meaning you're not going to see no money off that dog mm. for another year. Um, so you're waiting that whole year. Then when it comes time to breed, you got a breeder to a male. So now you're looking at spending anywhere from 1500 to seven, 10 bands for this stud. And then now on top of that, you're paying for the PGs. And if you're not well aware of what to look for a PG, like you said, mm. you spent you know, on five to eight um, P- PGs. Mm-hmm. And um, in California, ver- we're very lucky that they can run from anywhere from 40 yeah. to $60. Yeah. But out of state, they're looking at 60 to $100 per PG. Mm. So you're looking at the PG. Then you're looking at after the PG, are you going to do an AI, a TCI, or a surgical? Mm. After those three, you have to, when you pick which one you want to do, 60 days, you're looking at more food. You're looking at prenatals. You're looking at a C-section. Now you're paying for a C-section. And if you're doing bullies, you're looking at ear crops and puppy shots and all this shit that's just accumulating, accumulating um, in a lot of money. You're going to be in the negative for a while before you get a positive, Mm. you know? And who are you in the game as well? If you're a nobody, you're probably not going to – No, who's going to buy a Mm. big band dog from nobody that nobody knows? (laughs) <laughs> so should you so should you is it good to buy a name brand dog say like this dog is like real known on 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 ig and everything like that the mm-hmm. the stud is real, real known is like would you recommend it if the person could afford it should they do that or yes buy, buy into the bloodline Okay. And know your bloodline. Okay. So not only buy into your bloodline, sometimes it's best that you come behind a camp that's already established. Mm. Like myself, I didn't come with no camp. I came out solely by myself, and I did it by myself. Okay. I hopped on from live to live, showing my dogs. And then from doing that, I was at dog shows two, three times a weekend. Um, mm. In California, we're blessed that we have so many yeah, shows. Yeah. But, I mean, one weekend I went from... Saturday morning, Claremont. Saturday night, Bakersfield. Sunday morning, Murrieta. Mm. Like, I drove all around to get my name out. So you're looking at gas, mileage, your time, 
the fees to get into the dog show, the fees to put your dog into the ring if you're putting your dog into the mm-hmm. ring. So it's it's a lot. Before you guys, it's hard because a lot of people glamorize. Like you see our chains, you see yeah, the dogs, yeah, yeah, you see yeah. the cars. That's that's the thing that I see about the, the breeding lifestyle is just that like this it's dog like produced this car. Yeah, basically, yeah. basically that's all I see. Um, you living in the lifestyle though. How out of ten breeders? How many people are really living that life versus portraying it? Like, I understand, like, I've dealt with a couple of breeders. They said that, like, advertising, the chains, the cars, and stuff like that is, is part of your advertising that your your brand and your dog, your name is actually successful. Mm-hmm. So buy my dogs and you can live how I live type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, so how much is that is, is authentic and how much of that shit is, like, is for? Mm, out of one to ten? Out of one to ten. A three? Three, so three of them are actually legit. The rest mm-hmm. of them are like the rest are finessing the fuck out, y'all. Okay. Yeah. So, what about the whole? Would you recommend like, obviously, you with your first two dogs, mm-hmm. trust a clinic? Or I ran across a lot of people that are like, man, like I got a boy that man, he does surgeries over here, he does PGs here, he got his own machine, he does that. Like, mm-hmm. what do you recommend? Um, it's really hard because even the vets are against us. So I've had situations where vets are like, no, you can't breed her. She's not ready mm. uh, because they're against breeding, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And okay. so you have to find um, places that you really, really um, trust. Um, there are there are a lot of reproduction services now, a lot of places um, such as like Aspen, um, True View, um, Dang, if I'm forgetting y'all, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but even, or like people like me who run our repro mobile service. So, mm. you know, there's me, there's um, Chewy, there's um, Jesse United Cali. Um, there's a few people that, that do them that I've hit off their numbers and they're great people. There's all the, also other repro places that are, you you going to see it though. Because you walk in and you see them kindergarten scissors and mm-hmm. you're like, what you mean cutting open with those? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely She's like, yeah, you see them? Uh-huh. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I got okay. a pair of those at home. <laughs> <laughs> but it is hard to like know who's legit or not. Mm. So I say when you're watching these lives, ask. Like, okay. who are y'all going to? And if you get like a, a four out of five, like, hey, I live in this neighborhood. Who are y'all going to? Then most likely that's who you need to be going to. Okay. Uh, so it's not it's not bad to follow the actual trend if it's actually like legit. Just do your research, really. Do your research and, and and see if you really like it. Don't follow the trend because a lot of people felt victim or fell victim to like the Frenchies, yeah. like yeah, 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 the coys, the fluffies, the mm. the you know everything that the pinks, the the then the hairless, yeah, the hairless, I'm yeah. Too, so yeah. don't just like a trend, just like them, you know, Jays you rocking, they mm-hmm. eventually gonna go out of style. And okay. So what I tell everybody is stick to the structure. Stick to what's not going to go out, you okay. know? So real quick, how can you explain to them, like, what are the benefits of attending, like, shows and networking with people and stuff? Okay, so there's people that don't. Um, I recently have stopped attending as much shows as I used to, mm-hmm. but I'm blessed enough now to have made my own name in the game. I snapped my, my name, you know? So I'm getting paid to attend shows now. Okay. So I get paid to judge as I'm I'm booked in Canada now. I'm booked in okay. Atlanta, New Mexico, um, North Carolina. Okay. So if I'm at every show the way I used to be, what's the point of paying me? I'm going to come regardless. So now I had to back up a little bit from going to the shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're new to the game, it is very important that you are at these shows because you might see a dog online. And you're like, oh, my God, I fucking love this dog. And then you go to the dog show, and you're like, that is that is not the same dog I saw. Damn, like that? <laughs> that Photoshop Photoshopping is dogs? real. Photoshopping Damn. bows, Photoshopping backs. I didn't seen it all. Really? Photoshopping. So the dog look like good structure, like, in the photo. Yeah, you get there. if the <laughs> dog is in knee-deep high grass, it's mostly... It's most likely tall, mm, you know. Mm, if it's mm. standing up on something, it's most likely tall. So mm. y'all gotta really go out to these shows and really see if that's even your style. And a lot of times too, breed to what um, breed to what your female what is lacking. Mm, you know, okay. you might buy buy a female and you're like, yeah, I like that one. But your bitch is as tall as fucking you know Statue of Liberty. Like, <laughs> no, you got it takes <laughs> steps. So. 
you guys gotta really like be realistic and don't be kennel blind either. Okay. You know, if you don't like it, most likely somebody else might not like it. Yeah, true. So what about what would you say about um when it comes to like reusing, like like say like you use the stud, you like how it came out, should they keep on using the same stud or should you always like shop around, try different like I'm glad you asked that question. We just had a debate. Okay, Okay. so I used a stud in November, and I bred back to him because I love him. But Mm. I bred a different bitch to him. Mm. So, uh, I, the waves change so, like, drastically. So, what might have been dope six months ago when you tried to breed your bitch Mm. and then, like, going again for that same... No, there's what? another stud that might be out that might look better than that one. Or mm. that one's sun is out now. So you might want to use the sun because the sun is better now. So mm. I know that there's a lot of people that have gotten their studs off of a second breeding to the same dog. So it just depends on if you really, really love that dog. But shop around. Mm. Shop, you know, okay, okay. like I said, go with, with, with what matches your dog because that that dog is not gonna match every dog in your yard yeah like i know like some people like to say like what worked the first time i mean like if it ain't broken then i actually don't don't mess with it but like you said like you might want to try something actually like Mm -hmm. especially the sun something younger stronger a lot of older breeders say that too if it ain't broken don't fix it but truth be told a lot of shit wasn't broken. Our fucking, um, remember the little, what were the, the sidekicks weren't yeah, broken. Yeah, I know, that's the, Yeah, that was, the, the chirps, I missed yeah. the chirps. The <laughs> we chirps talked about wasn't that broken. Yeah. They weren't broken, okay. but look at us now, yeah, you know? True. It's just, as so how, time goes, things progress. So how can they keep up with the wave? Like, do you have to have social media? Like, you have to be on this shit? Yeah. Is There's not another way to communicate with the community besides social media. Like, and Being what, at and, the dog shows? And, like, what do you recommend? Like, is it IG? Is it Facebook? Like, what is it? Like, There's what different it? communities, different strokes for different folks. You feel mm-hmm. me? A lot of the community is on IG, but mm-hmm. a lot of the community is on Facebook. I see, like, a lot of people, though, that they that I've seen, like, having the Frenchies and stuff, like, that they actually, there's a lot of, like, haters, like, a lot of people that hate dog breeding on on Facebook, or you could post, <laughs> say like, example. They're stricter on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. I see people like post, post like their Frenchies and they be like, man, look like that snout look all like bad. That dog's mixing the terrier and shit. Like, <laughs> they, hey, a lot they of y'all guys like, <laughs> <laughs> look, a, a Frenchie should not have a muzzle. Yeah, okay. And that's why when the fluffies came out, we were like, what the fuck is that? Like recently they introduced the fluffy bully. I'm not gonna hop on that. Bully? Bl- bullies can barely already walk. Okay, oh, yeah, bullies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not putting a bunch of fur on my fucking dog because y'all want to do that. Okay. You and know? then how much they selling those for? The same. The same. Yeah. Okay. The same. Well, I don't think it really caught on. I saw Fluffy Eb. Yeah. It's all right. Mm-hmm. They. Didn't, I don't think they. I think they were hoping it would catch on like the Fluffy Frenchies. Mm-hmm. But it didn't. It didn't. No. Mm, okay. And then. How can you, what's important to build your brand as, as like you did like yourself? Like, is it make sure like what you're providing for the community is always like healthy dog, good structure, unique color. So oh, like, yeah. what is it? Um, For me, I don't care about color. So no color doesn't matter. I don't care about, I got the colors nobody gives a fuck about. I have a black female. Don't nobody like black bulls. They're mm-hmm. just coming back in. I have blue, which is the OG colors. Mm-hmm. I got an all white female. I had somebody, I'm. <laughs> Remember when I first had my first bully litter? One came out all white, mm. and uh, one of the breeders was like, "Drown that motherfucker!" Like, <laughs> <For real? laughs> nobody it likes white being. Boy? It ended up being ticked, but no, I have a all white female. Um, no, er, what's in right now is like the lilacs or the ghost tries. Mm-hmm. Those things are in right now, you know. Um, but I don't breed for color. I breed for structure because at the end of the day, when mm. your color go out, you are gonna have to come back to me. Mm. So I would say go go with the structure, y'all. Okay. And like, like building you said, the like, platform. Yeah. Um, everybody does it differently. Like, um, we got into a, a debate the other day on live. Mm. Um, everybody feels everything is different. So a lot of the older breeders are like, "Oh, your productions, your productions got to be there. Uh, that comes first. Your dogs." But yes, that's very true. But if you have the most beautiful dogs, who the fuck gonna see them without your platform? Mm, you okay. know. So to me personally, um, last year I focused on my platform. Before my bitches were of age to breed, mm. I focused on growing my platform. Because at the end of the day, who's gonna buy a bully from a bitch they don't know? And I'm already. 
it's already hard being a female in the game. Yeah, that's, so, that's what I was going to ask Yeah, you if I'm not showing body parts or none of that, it's really hard. But mm-hmm. I somehow did it, you okay. know? And yeah. I'm very proud of that. My yeah. platform, um, I started my Push and P page because I left the kennel I was a part of. But I started my Push and P page of March of 2022. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, we're now in what um, July? Yeah. I'm over ten thousand followers Damn, in that's good. a year. That's good. Yeah. That's what's up. Because I even see now too, like people. I'm, not, well, I'm pretty sure, like we get the same shit too. But like people always ask, like, "Hey, can I get a shout out or mm. or this?" And I was like, "And for me, like, I don't mind doing it for guests. Obviously, you know, what I'm saying like, I always want to return the love that they came mm. through and, and told their story or whatever it was. But like, like if you just a flat out stranger, like, like I hey, charge for promo. Like, oh, you do. I charge for okay. promo. Okay, okay, okay. I'll show love to a certain extent, mm. but um, the people you try to show love to aren't showing you love back. Exactly. You're not sharing my fucking dogs. Uh, yeah, I, I grew you. my platform. I'm sorry. I, I did this shit alone. Y'all weren't there. Okay. So for the people that I remember that did, like, were genuine from mm. the beginning, mm. hell yeah, y'all can get all day, every day okay. um, promotion. I don't mind. I, and I always tell those people, like, tag me so I see it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But as far as everybody else, y'all could get this promotion fee. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, because y'all ain't going to give me a discount on your puppies. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Everything causes. You wipe my hand, I wipe mm. yours. You feel me? Mm. You pay for this promotion. Shit, I might need you, you know, true. two, three months. True. My back might be hurting. I, I might need that massage that you wanted me true, to promote. True, you feel true, me? True, true, So how is it? how would you compare it to, obviously, men and women are different. Like, mm-hmm. is it harder or easier for you? I think. Maybe some men would probably be like, obviously, if you're like an attractive woman, you probably get some, somebody might give you some breaks, some ease and stuff stuff like that. Or some dudes might give you static just because you're a female and they want to say that you don't know what you're doing because you're a woman. It's pros and cons to it. Um, It's harder for those of us who aren't on here shaking ass. You know what I mean? So it's, there's actually women breeze out here? Oh, like, hell, out is here with there? the titties out with a dog? Like. Titties out? I, I think they selling themselves. They ain't selling them <laughs> big ass puppy. How these bitches got... Ugly ass dogs, <laughs> and they're only getting away with them ugly ass dogs because they have a pair of tits. Okay, and all okay, the guys okay. are liking them, but they hit me like, "Yo, you seen someone's so big ass dog?" <laughs> <laughs> like, Man, this is funny as hell. You talk about this like, yeah. like I see so many times that somebody like post a Frenchie, and they be like, "That Frenchie got a tail." Man, that ain't no Frenchie. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they be roasting and cl- yeah. I'm like, "Damn, that's cold." Oh yeah, in the back lines, we for sure making fun of y'all. Okay. Like, long ass, <laughs> big bored dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, oh they be like, back. <laughs> like French, Frenchies, like super long, long legs and shit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, we call them giraffes. Like, you don't get your giraffe out of here. <laughs> and like, that type of dog would just end up always just being like, obviously you can't sell it, so it's always being like a pet. No, there's always gonna be someone stupid buying it. Like, there's always gonna be a dumbass breeder. Uh, I mean, not a breeder, a uh, rapper yeah. that saw you and was like, shit. She's charging twenty five thousand. She's charging twenty four. I'm gonna go with the twenty five hundred, and mm. it looked like a twenty five hundred dollar. I see like, memes about that all the time. Yeah. People like, so what was that like? Something about like I sell my dogs for four thousand, and like, and yeah. say like just because I didn't give you a break, I seen you go buy the yeah. other dog for five thousand. Oh, we for sure terrible. making fun mm-hmm. of you. You in all of our group chats. <laughs> <laughs> it happens though, but I think um, it's pros and cons. Mm. So like. I was very blessed to be able to grow my platform without having to do the extracurricular activities that the other females are doing. (laughs) I was very blessed. But Mm. now that I've grown my platform so quick, there is people that are like, I've had men that are like, yeah, um, read to my stud. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I had somebody that was like, yeah, I'm going to give you a puppy. Like, I just want you to promote it in Cali. Push me, you the perfect person to do this. I was like, okay, bet. Mm. Weeks later. So, um, how you feel about polygamy? What? What? Then later on. <laughs> oh, dog. Push and pee. <laughs> Can I come out? Can I fly you out? Boy, no, I'm not oh, trying to get God. flew out to get blew out. <laughs> but I left him with the dog. Oh, that's crazy. And I think crazy. that's probably what's been harder yeah. for me is that okay. I haven't been given in, you know? So you don't ever get no dudes that's up front? What you mean, up front? That's like, hey, like... I like I'm trying to talk to you, but then like we can include the dog thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. it, it did for a while. I had a, I mean, I, I had one like every other week, like throwing, mm-hmm. you know, they all. But then it's like you see that more. It's like, is that a bitch in the back of your life, or is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you married? Oh, like that's so, crazy. It, yeah. This breeder shit, you know, it gets crazy. It, it, okay. it really does. But I think it's um 
there are pros and cons to being a woman. The pros mm. is, you know, yeah, men want to watch you on live. I'm, I'm, it's oh, nice yeah. to look at a female. Yeah. Cons is that bitch don't know what she's doing. Mm. That bitch only getting this because she probably giving ass up. She probably doing this. Yeah. She probably doing that. She probably, you know. Yeah, not even and safe in the animal world. Huh? Not, not even in the animal world. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's a zoo out there. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's, it's right. different. So, what about people too that need to get supplies? Is it obviously I don't know if it's a thing or knocking and all that. Is it safe to buy shit like Amazon and shit like that? Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just okay. depending on okay. what you're buying. Like, so, um, what about these like homemade like in- incubators things? Is that cool or depending on who you're buying your homemade incubators from? Okay, you know, um, there's different incubators. Make sure that the temperatures are correct on them. Mm. So you know, um. In an incubator, when you first have your litter, you want to have them out at like an 85. So make sure it can drop temperatures. Make sure that if your temperature rises up too high or too low, that that incubator is going to go off. Mm. So we're blessed enough to have um, YouTube pages that are very, yeah. very informative. Um, one of them that's very, very informative, and he's actually having a class um, August 19th. I'm going to be a part of that as well. Okay. He's charging... <sighs> I don't know how much he's charging, but it is on his page. Okay. Breeders Hack. You can find him on breedershack.com. Okay. And on Instagram, he's Double Muscle Line Bulls. And on YouTube, he's Double Muscle Line Bulls. Watch him. And he's actually really hated in the game right now because so. he's given so much free information oh, people that him. people okay. don't yeah. like how much free information. So okay. this man will tell you how to get puppy shots. This mm-hmm. man will tell you what your PG levels are supposed to be. Yeah, I had the pleasure of having... He's in New York. I had dinner with him the other day. Okay. Um, he came out here to check out the venue for mm-hmm. the class. So he's a really good person to watch and very informative that is not going to steer you wrong. And he um, he promotes um, this, it's called the Plumber's Vet Book. It's on Amazon. You can buy it. It's $100. It is a lot of money. But that vet book has every medication you could possibly think of, and it'll tell you everything that it's good for. So it's good. those are good things to have. Okay. And what about people that are... What would you say to the people that are like scared of like giving the dogs a shot like that? Like, is it is it really really easy? Well, Should they not be scared? It. Well, I mean, it's like anything else. You feel me? What's for you is for you, and what's not for you is not for you. To me, what might be easy to me might not be easy to you. True. So to me, it's not hard to you know. Some people make fun of it when you do the AIs. It's yeah. like, oh, you're jacking off your dog. No, I am not jacking <laughs> yeah. off my dog. And if I am, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's those things and. What might be, like I said, hard for someone, if if it's not for you, mm. at least watch the videos of to know what it looks like and what you should be doing. So if somebody's doing it to your dog, you'd be like, mm, no, that don't look like what he did over there. Mm. Be one step ahead of the game. And that's what I always tell people. Even though you might not do it, watch a video on how to do it so that you're informed on how to. Okay. And then how much can you share with them how – like, what is a decent price range on, like, you paying for, like, nursing service? Like, once you have, like, your... Your whelping? Your, yeah, your whelping. Like, okay, so whelping, it depends on where you're from. So, I know a whelper in Texas that charges 1000 a week. Okay. Minimum four weeks. Is that, now, does that sound about good? Out there? Or, or, or is that... Yeah. Okay. Out here, um, you can... They can range from 500 to 1000 uh-huh. And um, weekly, most of the times, it's a four-week minimum. Um, what I will tell you guys, though, is um, don't go off, oh, the homie's girl says she whips. <laughs> no, do okay. your research and, and look at her page and find out how many litters has she whipped, how many litters died, how many litters survived, how many, you know, got sick, how many did, because when there's a turnaround, some people might have dogs that have, like, something wrong with it, mm-hmm. um, and now the whole litter was sick and died in that incubator. Mm-hmm. Did they clean that incubator out? Because yeah. they're not putting your puppies in there, you know? Mm-hmm. I personally have never used a whelper. Um, I've always so you whel- yourself? Yeah, yeah, I do them all myself. Um, I've whelps for other people that I'm close to, but it's a lot. So And then there's a lot of people. Then you get the people that are like, I saw it on YouTube. I can do it. Man, I see. Man, every that time, the time is serious. That like every you think two you, hours, oh, I'm gonna snooze it a little bit longer in the middle of the mm, night. Man, you gonna wake up and litter gonna be gone. Gone. Like, yeah. And then not only it's not even about just feeding your fucking puppies every two hours. You could have a puppy that's fading away. Sure. That's dying. Do you know what to do to that puppy? Do you have? Because I I do. I have a nebulizer mm. and all those things at home. Okay. Do you have the proper medication to save that puppy? Because okay. if you don't, you're probably gonna lose. And depending on what litter. 
that might be, nine times out of ten, that's the best puppy you fucking lost that mm, was in that litter. Okay. You know, like like would you so would you recommend don't even breed unless you have these tools or like have like a twenty four hour like like clinic nearby that you can that you know you can fuck with. Yeah, um, I would say find someone because there's people out there that are always willing to give you free game. I give free game. Mm. You know, there's always people that are willing to help you. So if you want to try, I. Man, I know somebody the other day, or uh, not the other day, but who had never whooped a day in his life. Damn, man, all them puppies survived. Okay. You know? So it might be for you. It might not be for you. If you don't trust yourself and you don't feel like you're going to do go with mm. it, get a whelper. There's a lot of whelpers out here in California. Mm. Um, yeah, it sounds steep, you know, paying that five, 600 but that's basically one puppy. One puppy. Yeah, and then there's some whelpers that are willing to trade you a puppy for whelping. Okay. You know? So then what would you recommend for the people that, are like, say, I found a good breeder. Um, they've been helping me a lot. I've been getting stuff from them. And then, say, I've already had my dog. And three weeks after I buy my dog, I see on social media other people are, like, just bashing them. You know how other breeders hate on other breeders and such like that. Should me, as a new breeder, should I – be taking any of that in or is that just part of the part of the game like breeders it's, just hating on breeders it's so hard like how can i trust that like like i i got to like i got a bully and i'm sitting here and I'm a couple weeks in and my dog looks pretty healthy but somebody out here is complaining like don't buy a dog from this dude he gave me a dog that was sick and blah blah he's a bad breeder don't believe that because mm-hmm. don't don't believe that go and find out where are the other litter mates to that you mm-hmm. know or go and see his previous and how they're doing. Mm. Because it's going to be somewhere. Mm. Just like there's a shade room yeah. in the rap game, oh, we yeah, got sure. shade rooms in the, <laughs> the bully game. <laughs> okay. There's like three, four pages oh, where really? you can easily find. But are they credible, though? Yeah, they're yeah. going to be on there telling oh, all your fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> but how, you know, it's just not people hating, though. That's just Sometimes like, they, they are. Sometimes, mm. Well, look at the post. Okay. Is it a person complaining that their puppy died? Or is mm. it a person just saying... You know, this person's breeding giraffes. Like, there's a difference. You could <laughs> tell. Giraffe. Like, you know, so-and-so, okay. baby mama doing this versus mm-hmm. facts. Like, okay. you you could tell. Okay. You know, okay. but I would definitely say, um, like I said, do your research and find out. Because nine times out of ten, like you said, there's haters out there that are like, I had someone. I had someone troll the shit out of me. Because really? I turned him down. Uh-huh. He, We all got into an altercation at a dog show. Then next, you know, posted everywhere. Push and P has never had a litter. Push and P has only been breeding a year. No, you dumb fuck. Mm-hmm. You learn how to read. He mm. he screenshotted. I've been in three different magazines. He screenshotted what I said in a magazine and posted it. Mm. And put she's only been breeding a year. No, I said I've been pushing P a year. Mm. I didn't, I've been breeding yeah, yeah. longer than that. Like you said, you was part of the kennel. Right? Yeah. Okay. So it's like pay attention to those things. Some of these people, it's. It's just like the real world. What do mm. they say? Less is more. So if you find someone that's on social media yapping, 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 that might not be the breeder you want to deal with. Okay. I guess you. So somebody that's all caught up in the drama, like, mm-hmm. you like, stay mm-hmm. away from the Pay shit. attention. Okay. And a lot of breeders, I never found out. I thought I, I thought adults were mature. Being mm. in the dog game, I've seen that, like. People do a lot of childish oh, shit. Oh, yeah. There'll be 50-year-olds on here. Damn. Big, <laughs> chilling, gossiping on the lives. And, God, damn. you know, you got people. Uh, uh, arguing, Cali to, to Florida, talking about, I'll oh, fuck you up, all oh, this, all oh, that. I'm like, boy, yeah. Like, I, I've been guilty of it. I'm not okay. going to lie to you. I've okay. told a few people, don't come out here. <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> but it's okay. just, yeah, it gets messy, and, it, and it's very high school. So when you come in, mm. find your group of people and stick to them and try and stay away from the drama because you'll get consumed in it, and you never know who's watching. Okay. And like you want to sell a dog, you don't know who's watching. Mm-hmm. Now someone might have seen you that was like, "Oh, I really like their camp," and you're on there yelling, calling a person in Florida a clown. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. so just you. yeah, just be careful. So, for you, where where does it work best? Like where you get your dog breeding, whelping goes good. You have a full litter. Where should they be looking to advertise their dog without? That you're not gonna get the low ballers trying to give you, can I, I'll give you a car for this dog type thing like none of that none of that extra shit's a legit majority of the time you'll get, you'll have a safe transaction like where where are you selling your dogs? Um, Instagram, Facebook, you know I've had people buy my dogs from South Carolina, Tampa, Florida. So re- um, real quick, can you speak up on that? Like, so how, what is your process to sell a dog out of state? You taking deposits? Like how are yes. you? Yes. Okay. So. Um, you'll message me. I'm posting the litter and you message me. You tell me you like a particular puppy. We'll negotiate the price. 
Um, the price does not include shipping. That is your job to get that dog over there. You bought the dog for me. Now that's your job. Have you ever have you ever tried to provide like shipping? Oh, I always do. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. I do. So depending on what it is, I like to I like to hand deliver the puppy to you. Oh, oh so you'll you'll take the trip. Oh out yeah, okay, I'll okay. for sure take the trip out there. But um, I'll let them know like okay, if the price is. This is just an instant IRS. Yeah. Don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, for instance, say the dog is um, okay. I sold the dog for twelve bands. Okay. Um, I let them know like I'm gonna be bringing it to you for twelve bands. Trust and believe, I drove mm-hmm. my ass all the oh, way yeah. the fuck out there. Okay. But there's levels to it. So that's another thing. Who are you handing your puppy to to deliver? Mm-hmm. So and that was one thing for me. These puppies only know me. So okay. for me to hand it to, I, the first bully I ever bought, like I said, was from Detroit. Mm. I've been to Detroit. That's a 32 hour drive. Oof. I've drove to Detroit. Also, you drove there. Yes. I've, dr- my dad yeah. lives in Detroit. Okay, I've okay. drove to Detroit. That's a 32 hour drive. Why did you take two weeks to get to me? Why? Mm. Because halfway here, your AC and your car engine blew out. Mm. So now it took you two weeks to bring my, by the time my dog got to me, it didn't look like the pictures. The dog was skinny as fuck. The dog had yellow paws from standing in its own piss. Didn't look like. And as soon as it comes into my house, takes the leakiest shit I've ever seen in my carpet. So, you know, and there's people out here that do hand deliver your dog on a plane. Um, Yeah. So what do you you, you think about that? Is it like, is it okay? Or is it like, you prefer just to drive? How, How does it work? Me personally? I like to drive my dog to wherever it's going. Okay. Or we going to figure it out. No matter the distance. No matter the distance. Like I said, I've been to Tampa to deliver a dog driving. Okay. So what I normally do is I'll wait till the litter's almost completely sold. And mm-hmm. then so like last litter, um, mm-hmm. I had a dog in South, Car- South Carolina mm-hmm. and Tampa. So what I did is I drove to South Carolina, dropped one off. We drove to um, Tampa, dropped one off. And then I turned around and went to Texas and bought one. And then drove my ass home. Okay. So, so I try to, like, you know, organize yeah, it so okay. that okay. one hit, I'm doing a little road trip and, mm-hmm. and coming home. And the only reason I do it that way is because if you're spending a significant amount of money with me, you should be able to shake my hand and know that it, you did good business yeah. with me. Okay. I want to hand deliver you that puppy so that I can have pictures and videos mm-hmm. to show, like, hey, yeah, I gave yeah. him this puppy in his hand. Because, God forbid, you hand me $12,000, I put this puppy on a plane, and now the motherfucker has died from a heart attack yeah. on the plane. Yeah. I got to hand you that back, and I took that L from mm-hmm. that puppy on the plane. Okay. And I still got to pay the person that, that mm-hmm. took the puppy to you. Yeah. Okay. So, you do your own self-delivery. So, mm-hmm. would you say that, would you recommend for anybody that's just starting, just sell locally first until you actually build your name, build your brand up, and then? Out of state is going to buy I'll from say. you. Really? Out of state is gonna believe in you more than more than the people around you is gonna believe in you. Mm-hmm. So okay, if you do want to decide to sell out of state and you don't have the time, because not everybody has the time to get on a fucking flight and drive yeah, across yeah. the country or fly across the country, mm-hmm. um, there's people out here that do it. We call them flight nannies. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is actually one of my homeboys, Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, he's his prices are great. Um, you could ha- find him at Pete underscore Thump, and or you can write me if you're looking for somebody, and I'll guide you the right way. His prices aren't high, and that man will send you pictures every fucking step of the way. Okay, Look, I just fed your dog. Yeah. Look, I just gave her water. Okay. Like, you know, and then he doesn't separate from the puppy either. So he doesn't throw the bu- puppy at the bottom of the plane. He, I'm, he's sitting with that motherfucker mm. on, the, on mm. the chair. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So lastly, can you share with them credible sources? Like, this is, like, the YouTube channel you should be looking for. These are... People that are like shout out that their IG is like who are who's credible to get some information from and that you work with. Okay, so I'm part of the Exotic Network, um, and with the Exotic Network, we uh, show a lot of limelight on a lot of um, people, and I do a lot of interviews. Okay. So a lot of the interviews that I'm um, doing are with breeders. So they're gonna tell you, you know, that's them. It's not coming out of my mouth. Mm. That's me interviewing yeah. something. They're gonna tell the truth. You know, and they'll tell you, like, who they weren't fucking with, who they are fucking with, wave, you know. Um, another podcast that's out there is the Bully Spitting Podcast. Um, they are also, like, uh, don't kill me, Dre. Yeah, <laughs> they're like the shade room. So they for sure going to tell you who's on some bullshit <laughs> okay, on there. Okay. Right. Um, like I said, for information, yeah. off top, 
um, double muscle iron bulls. Double I stand, his name's Angel. I stand behind Angel 100%. Okay. Um, great person. Tons of information. Um, he also has a website where you can buy a lot of the shit that he's telling you to buy. Okay. Um, great camps that I would say to definitely follow that are that have some of the biggest dogs in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, George, Bully Camp Line, off top, my favorite breeder. Um, he's the first person to clone a bully. Um, oh, wait a minute. Hey, I think I did see a YouTube. Is, is there a YouTube video? Mm-hmm. Of it? Uh, okay, I see that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. He cloned Miyagi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and he just cloned Red Rum. Um, Jason from Imported Bullies. Um, there's a few. Um, oh, my God. Don't kill me, guys. Um <laughs> She trying to remember me. Yeah, there's so many of them that I that I'm so cool with, and I'm I'm cool with like pretty much everybody in the community. Okay. So EBs, Frenchies, you know, um, make sure you follow those people and really really look at their platforms. You'll never see mm-hmm. these people live on some drama bullshit. You'll okay. never see them, you know, they in their own little world and doing what we all want to do, which is create generational wealth for our kids. That's so and that's what a lot of you guys lose, you know, mm. track of. So. Can you let them know also, is this something that they can do full time? Like they usually work at a warehouse right now, or would you tell them like, don't quit your job right now? Like do it how long? Don't like, how, quit your job. How we so this should so should this be always be a side thing or a main thing? With anything, what do they always tell you? Don't afraid don't be afraid to take a risk. Mm. You know? Don't be afraid mm. if, if you're half in, that's mm. all that you're gonna get. So when did you go fully in? Like when did you know like this is like Last year, my actual business um, went to the back burner, and I suffered in my other business because I'm just bringing it back right now. All my customers, I obviously did not have time, so I, I you know, I put them all on the back burner to push this full time, okay. and it paid off for me. Okay. You know, um, like I said, in the short year, um, over ten thousand followers. I became a part of a podcast. I am now paid to attend dog shows. Um, I'm dropping my litters soon. Um, I just, um, one of my females I confirmed this week. Um, so just don't, it's going to cost a lot of money. Don't leave your job just yet. And, and, and that first 25,000 that you see, don't Mm -hmm. fucking be like, I'm quit. Amazon, fuck you. (laughs) Don't, (laughs) don't do that (laughs) because that same money turn around and invest it again. Mm. Turn around and continue to invest in your program so that you finally can see something out of it, mm. you know? Okay. All right. Lastly, can you tell them where to find you, where are you, where they can network with you? <laughs> of course. Y'all can find me at Pushin P Bullies, P-U-S-H-I-N-P, Bullies with a Z, Y-Z. And, um, and you can find me on YouTube as well um, on the Exotic Network, Pushin P. Okay. So, I, I'm like I said, I'm on there. So How often do you guys do shows over there? Um, we were doing them weekly. Mm-hmm. Um, recently we, we took a step back, okay. but, um, we were at a lot of dog shows, shows mm-hmm. as well. So y'all can always find me at a dog show too. I'm, I'm most likely I'm there in a cut somewhere, Okay. but yeah, so we, we podcast, um, I'm trying to do it weekly again. So I just did one last mm-hmm. week. I'll probably do one next week. Um, where I'm just getting a bunch of breeders and yeah. shoot the shit with it. That will be. Um, July 27th at 6 p.m. on the Exotic Network on YouTube. So, y'all tune okay. in. So, for sure, check her out. You guys know where to find her. Mm-hmm. And this is a money episode, man. Don't be hitting her up <laughs> for no other stuff, man. And we'll have you on After Hours <laughs> shortly here. <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> Business only. <laughs> Business only. <laughs> All right, BBC, we out. We out.